Now to the economy, uh, inflation slumping for the very first time to its lowest point in this year. 40.1% is the figure that we're dealing with, but it appears that uh, food inflation remains uh, on the surge. Uh, why is this happening? Let's listen to the government statistician, uh, Professor Samuel Enim, announcing that earlier today. Line figure for August 2023 rate of inflation stood at 40.1 percent, indicating that between August 2022 and August 2023, prices of goods and services generally have went up by 40.1 percent over the one-year period. That is between August 2022 and. August 2023, general prices of goods and services went up by 40.1%. While we continue to see higher rate of inflation, this is the first time that we've we, we seen a slowdown in the rate of increase in our rate of inflation. Last month, July 2023, the rate of inflation stood at 43.1%, and this was on the back of consistent increases in the rate of inflation in the last five months, and we're now seeing a slowdown in the rate of increase by by 3.0 percentage point, with the rate of inflation slowing down from 43.1 percent in July 2023 to 40.1% in August 2023. Based on the disaggregations from a food and non-food perspective, we recorded a 21 percentage point difference between food inflation and non-food inflation, with food inflation 51.9 percent for the month of August 2023 and non-food inflation 30.9 percent. Respectively, food inflation and non-food inflation have slowed down by 3.1% and 2.9%, given the rates that were recorded for July 2023. Further disaggregating the headline figure of 40.1% for inflation on imported items and inflation on locally produced items, inflation on locally produced items stood at 42.4% 40, for the month of August 2023, relative to 86.2%. 36.2% for inflation on imported items for the month of August 2023. In the last 12 months, this is the first time we've seen a higher rate of inflation for locally produced items relative to inflation for imported items. From a geography point of view, we identified the, the Northeast region recording the highest rate of inflation of 60.1% and the Greater Accra region recording the least rate of inflation of 31.8% for the month of August 2023. Inflation for the, from the perspective of month-on-month -month inflation, we recorded deflation of 0.2% for the month of August 2023. Disaggregating this from a food and non-food perspective, both food and non-food inflation recorded a deflation of 0.3% and 0.2% for the month of August 2023. Also, uh, government statistician Professor uh, Samuel Enin uh, announcing that uh, earlier today. Uh, what's the implication and why are we seeing a surge when it comes to uh, food inflation? Joining us now is the uh, head of, uh, uh, of course, uh, data analyst uh, Isaac Ophiaji, who is with our research desk, uh, joining us uh, with more uh, on the figures that we're seeing, the lowest um, ever since we started this year. Uh, but for those of us who Let's go to the markets, there'll still be complaints slightly about because of the pricing. Absolutely, that's why we have to appreciate uh, this inflation as you know an average and then also testing your back basket of goods that mm. you consume as an ordinary or an average Ghanaian. In fact, it is always important to compare this year on year and see the trend as to whether we are going forward or we are actually you know going back. In terms of we have a target, we had a target of right. eight. Uh, point eight, I think 8.8 .8 plus or minus 2, we were not able to do that. We've now revised that target uh, to end the year with an inflation rate of a little above 31% for 2023. Mm -hmm. But if you compare this 40.1 headline inflation to what we had, the last time we had such, an, such a low inflation rate or somewhere September 2022. I see. So this is a one-year period and this is the lowest in 12 months. Significant news very positive news for the economy and because it's one of the indicators. Some of the things that when you have an, an IMF program you should expect to improve is inflation rates, your currency must uh, be stabilized and then also you must um, have an improvement in your import cover and then also uh, your international reserve. So positive news over there. 
But it is interesting when the government statistician was speaking, he said something, I don't know if you really paid attention, he said that Northeast region is a region with the highest inflation currently. I see. The headline inflation is 40.1, but mm -hmm. in Northeast, inflation is currently around 60.1%. And if you look at Greater Accra, we all know inflation in Greater Accra should, um, you know, when we are talking about the usual suspect in terms of who, which region has the highest inflation, which should include Greater Accra. But now it's one of the regions with the, the least or the lowest inflation in August 2022. So some positive news. Yeah. But it will be interesting to know why Northeast <laughs> region is currently... Is this indeed. Uh, but, but if you look at the yeah. entire picture, and, and of course you have uh, excerpts of that on your screens right now. And undulating you yeah, know, trend yeah, yeah. of of how the figures appear to be behaving. Um, 33.9 as of uh, August 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at the same period um, this year mm -hmm. and you, you compare, know, you see it's a little bit, it's high. Yeah. That's 40.1 in August last year was around 30 point, I think 30.9 or so. Yeah. yeah. So, so you just look at that constant surge yeah. and, you yeah. know, deep of the, of the figures. What's really accounting for this? Uh, is there any explanation from the statistical Well, of service? course, uh, some of the items with very, you know, um, heavy weight in terms of inflation mm -hmm. continues to mm -hmm. be food and non-alcoholic beverage, housing and utilities, and also transport. Yeah. Maybe we are not seeing the frequent increments in transport fares, but it's one of the you know, items with very high, you know, weight on inflation, mm -hmm. around 10.2%. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, blessed, when we talk about inflation, it's always good to disaggregate mm -hmm. so that the ordinary Ghanaian can, you know, um, resonate with the figures that we are actually speaking about. So headline inflation is 40.1. Yeah. But if you look at inflation for an item or a food item like dog meat, Dog meat inflation is around 97.8%. Right. Headline is 40. You have dog meat inflation being around 97.8%. Now, if you look at inflation rates for um, you know, fish, sea, you know, from, from the sea, uh, it's around 76.8%. Tomatoes is around 74.8%. Rice, local rice inflation is around 73.5%. Crab, those, who, those of us who love to me, I'm an Adventist, so yeah. I mean, it's... You love that a lot. No, no, I don't really... Okay, I get it. But, but people love to take crab, you know, they love to have it in their okros. Yeah, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. inflation is around 73%. Mm -hmm. Toothpaste, inflation is around 72.7%. And money or herring is around 71.8%. Baby food, and fathers and mothers, baby food is still very expensive. It's around 71.2%. And palm oil is around 70.2%. And ready-made clothing for boys still remains very high with an inflation rate of 70%. So these are the top 20 items probably that the Ghana Sascal Service One policy, uh, you know, um, wants us to engage properly and then also use for us uh, as a policy engagement tool and all of that. So these 20 items all recorded inflation rates above the headline figure of 70, you know, 40.1%. Uh, Isaac Kofi, AJ, bringing us uh, the latest uh, on that. Uh, let's, uh, of course, hear from uh, economist Dr. Patrick Esumi, who's joining us now. Uh, Doc, you know, the latest figures that we're seeing now, uh, what, what will be, you know, the impact on our pockets? Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon to US. Thanks for having me. So, I think... First of all, we have to understand that the inflation is, is a backward-looking measure. So it's not something that is coming up. So it's something that we've already experienced because the 40 plus percent that you see is the rate of change between uh, August this year and August last year. But in terms of what it means for the overall stability of the economy and where we are, well, so the number is a reduction which generally is, uh, for me, is a, a little bit of a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting that uh, the inflation number will go down at this point. So overall, it doesn't mean that, the reduction doesn't mean that prices are falling. Prices are still rising, except that compared to the previous month, prices are not rising as fast. So we shouldn't misconceive that to mean uh, things are getting better. 
uh, rather, in, in well, rather, what's the reality, sir? Well, so the, the simple reality is that <laughs> the rate at which prices are rising is, has slowed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Things are still getting more expensive. But except that compared to previous months, it is not getting as expensive as it used to be. So we shouldn't think that uh, the reduction means uh, there's more, our purchasing power has increased or anything like that. That's not the case. Uh, and Professor Lord Mensah is also joining the conversation, Prof. Um, the opinion of Dr. Patrick is the fact that, yes, the figure uh, might look good on paper, except that we need to uh, exercise some caution. But what do you also think about the figures? Yeah, I mean, uh, numerically, uh, it's showing a downwards I mean, signal. I mean, inflation, I mean, dropping from 43 point something to 40.1. I mean, it shows that um, general price levels as compared to uh, August 2022 has generally, I mean, increased by 41%. And so um, that's a signal. But then also we may have to look at how this is related to investment. You know, treasury bill rate as we speak now is around 30 point something percent. And so we still, you know, um, seeing that negative real value on investment. And as a result of that, we shouldn't, you know, jubilate that much, you know, when it comes to um, this reduction. Until we see inflation running apart with investment rate, we cannot, you know, um, I mean, keep our hands in the air and be jubilating as if um, we've achieved something. So what I would say is that numerically, I mean, we see reduction. But then its economic impact, uh, we're not going to feel it yet. I mean, prices are still, you know, going up as uh, Patrick has indicated. And uh, just that the speed at which, I mean, it is going up has reduced, you know. And uh, But then the worrying aspect of our inflation is um, the way food infl inflation keeps on driving, you know, the inflation numbers. Um, you see, for every country to be comfortable, even in our households, if you your kids are going to behave very well, you should always have food in the house. If you have food in the house, I mean, you're going to have very, you know, kids that will keep to your home because um, they always get food to eat. What I would advise is that going forward, policies should be geared towards, you know, the staples. Because if you look at the food aggregation, I was looking at the presentation, tubers, cereals, and all those, uh, ones that we consume, I mean, every now and then, are the ones causing, you know, this inflation drive. And so if government should roll out any policy, I would say that, yeah, they should target, you know, cereal. I mean, if for nothing at all, rice, you know, should be on the market, maize should be on the market, looking at um, the tubers as well. So from where I sit, yes, I mean, numerically, we've seen a reduction, but its economic impact, will not be felt um, looking at you know the investments uh, returns relative to the inflation recordings that we have okay uh, and, and that's why i believe uh, policies such as the planting for food and jobs uh, would have to come in and be strengthened but uh, dr patrick assuming beyond you know the pfj2 um, what other policy measures would you want to see at least to address that so i think if you if you do the disaggregation by um, local inflation on local items and inflation on imported items, you, you see that the inflation on local items is way higher. And also it's been trending up. In the last three readings or so, you see that each successive month, the inflation on imported items is rising. So it gives you a signal that the, the overall cost of doing business in this country is rising. And I think we need holistic measures to address that. I agree with a uh, lot about having to do do more doing more investment in the in the food in the food production chain but we have to understand that there is a whole chain we can't say we are supplying fertilizers or we are providing inputs and that will lead to increased production and we don't do anything about the distribution side because if the roads are not good and we don't have more story chains, and we don't have faster and better means of distributing the food by way of road and rail network. 
the cost of food on the farm at the farm gates might be lower, but the cost of food in markets will still be high. And I think it's one of the challenges that you know we saw in the first phase of the planting for food and jobs, where the former Greek minister would say, "Well, food production is increasing," talking from the point of view of the farm gate. But then, if it's so expensive, because fuel is expensive, and uh, it's difficult to get trucks to cut the food from the production side to the market, the food prices will still go up. So I think we need to have a more holistic approach to addressing the inflation. Mm. There is, you know, so we know currently under the IMF program, utility prices are also going up. All of those are adding to the cost of production. So we shouldn't really expect that uh, we'll get anywhere near the, the medium term target of 6 to 10 percent. I think food pri prices are going to remain high, inflation is going to remain high, and the food inflation is also going to remain high because the food inflation we see now is a reflection of the conditions at the previous planting season. Now we are harvesting. If you don't harvest enough, it's not something that we can really do anything about. So we really need to do the investment at the planting season to ensure that, you know, the productivity is high. And at the same time, when, have, when we are doing that investment, we also think about the entire distribution chain. And Isaac, um, you know, th there are more uh, figures that we should be paying yeah, attention right. to, especially the northeast that you're talking ab about. But beyond that, uh, what's also striking in this report? Well, of course, uh, northeast, for instance, these mm -hmm. are regions that they have vast lands and probably some of the other regions have arable lands for planting, for food and jobs. Right. But I'm also looking at the data as uh, on the planting for food and jobs, for instance. Between 2017 and 2022, when government actually carried the phase one of this planting for food and jobs, um, we've done the analysis and we've seen that government was spending on average somewhere $17 million every year on the planting for food and jobs. Now, before the PFJ started, food inflation in April 2017, before the PFJ started, was around 7.2%. Now, six years later, after we've enrolled, you know, rolled out this um, planting for food and jobs, mm -hmm. food inflation has moved from that 7.2 percent in April 2017 to now 51.9 percent in August 2022. Mm -hmm. It means the situation has worsened. Food inflation has now increased by more than seven folds in this six-year period that we, you know. And roll, we roll out this planting for food and job program. That's why I agree with Doug that yeah. it's a whole chain. Yeah. And so if you are just dealing with, you know, just uh, su supplying fertilizers or just dealing with seedlings and not tackling other aspects, you you see the figures, you know, pointing out to you that maybe you are not tackling the whole chain. And if you don't do that, there's no way you are going to, you know, have your food inflation coming down. Uh, Professor Professor Lord Mensa, how do we beat this curve down? Come again, please. I How do we beat well. the curve down? Right. Yeah, I mean, clearly it tells you that the 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 planting for food and jobs, you know, I mean, policy did not make impact because if you have a policy, you expect that the policy would turn around, you know, inflation. If there should be any indicator that would drive our inflation, it should be it shouldn't be food. I mean, looking at the um, the policy that we've rolled out and the quantums of monies that we've pumped in there. I have always been, you know, um, saying that we we had, yes, on paper, planting for food and jobs, all right, but a lot of the monies went into more of capacity building and it was the hotels who were benefiting from, the, you know, the monies that were allocated for planting for food and jobs. So from going forward, I will suggest that, yes, uh, we should, I, I'm, I also, you know, I believe in the, a whole lot of a systemic approach where, I mean, you may not look at just the agriculture side, but then there are other factors that may also drive, you know, food inflation. So we should look at it holistically and then approach it, you know, as a system. And that should be able to, you know, solve the problem we're facing now. Mm. And for you, Dr. Patrick Isuin, on the way forward? Well, I think the way forward is, uh, you know, improve the overall business environment. 
I think that's that's crucial. Cost of doing business in the country is going up, and you know when that happens, it will reflect in prices. At the same time, you know we can't emphasize this enough. Making sure that there's holistic investment in the whole agri value chain, from the seedling, from the input to the production, production systems, then the storage systems to the distribution. All of those have to happen, but. Those things don't happen overnight. If you make those investments today, it might take you a, at least six months before you start seeing the benefit. So we have to do more investment. And then think about the, you know, think more broadly about how things are working in the economy, not just focus on one, one aspect. I'm grateful, uh, gentlemen, Dr. Patrick Isumi and also uh, Professor Lord Mentor for joining the conversation.